Number one says which value would best fit in the missing cell to suggest there is no evidence of an association between the variables. So when we look at whether there's evidence, so when we're going to display the date on digital or analog versus no date on digital or analog, you want those to be in the same proportion if there's no evidence of an association. If those are different proportions, then that would suggest that having a digital watch or an analog watch impacts whether the date is there. So when we look at this, um, I look this way. And now for this one, I notice that 54 to 27, I can just divide by two. So 18 divided by two should give me this number so that it's approximately, or in this case, exactly the same proportion. Um, you can also add up the total 54 plus 27, which is 81 watches here, and do 54 divided by 81, which gives you like 67%, and then 27 divided by 81 gives you 33%. Then do the same down here, 18 plus, plus something is going to give you um, your total. So in this case, you could like add each of these into your total to change it around. So if we did eight plus nine, that's 27. And then 18 divided by 27 gives us 67. And nine divided by 27 gives us um, 33. So then we see that that's in the same proportion for that first answer choice. So we would pick that one. And then you could have tried it with each of the other ones too to figure out which one gives you the best percent if the first one didn't work. For number two, the relative frequency table shows the percent of each type of art, painting or sculpture in a museum that would classify in the different styles of modern or classical. Based on these percentages, is there evidence to suggest an association between the variables? So when we look here, you know, it goes 41 to 59%. So 41% of the paintings are modern, 59% are classical. So then we would want to see that the sculptures are similarly um, split. And so these are, this is still about 40 and about 60. So they're not much different. They're still split relatively the same. Something that would be significantly different is if only like 20% of the sculptures and 80 per were modern and 80% were classical. But here we're still around a 40-60 split. So I would say no evidence. Because the percents are approximately the same. Number three, an automobile dealership keeps track of the number of cars and trucks they have for sale as well as whether they are new or used. Based on the data, does, it, does there appear to be an association between the type of automobile and whether it's new or used? So let's just add together the number of new cars there are. 812 plus 233 gives us 1,045 here. So if we do 8,000, or sorry, 812 divided by 1,045, we get about 78% of the new, um, the new vehicles are cars. And then 233 divided by 1,045 tells us that 22% of the new vehicles are trucks. Then when we look at used, that's 422 plus 51 gives us 473 here. So 422 divided by 473 gives us 89% of the used vehicles are cars. And 51 divided by 473 gives us 11% of the used vehicles are trucks. So now this one is pretty significantly different, right? We're at 80% here almost versus 90 and really like twice as many trucks. Um, twice as many percent of trucks are new versus used. So this one would suggest, yes, there's an association um, because 
there are significantly more um, used cars or there, maybe let me type this. I'm going to say there's more um, proportion of cars. So let's, let me type this. So yes, there seems to be an association because the proportion of used cars being sold is significantly higher. Um, then new cars and same with trucks. There are more new trucks being sold than, um, used. So there are more proportions or there is more. So comparing those percents, you want to see the percents being similar. And if there's, you know, quite a difference between the um, categories, then that suggests an association. So it suggests there's an association between new and used versus car and truck. Number four, a survey is given to 1,432 people about whether they take a daily supplement, um, daily supplemental vitamins, and whether they eat breakfast on a regular basis. The results are shown in the table. Create a relative frequency table that shows the percent of the entire group in each cell. So you can redraw um, a table. Remember, it said there's 1,432 people. So what you're going to do is divide each of these numbers by 1432. So we're going to do 384 divided by 1432 in our calculator. And you'll get 0.268. So then as a percent, and I'm just going to write it in here, that's 27%. So then 476 divided by 1432 gives us 33%. 268 divided by 1432 gives us 19%. And then 304 divided by 1432 gives us 21%. Number five, several college students are surveyed about their college location and preferred locations for a spring break trip. What percentage of people who prefer to spend spring break at the beach, go to college away from the coast. So now we're looking at um, only the people who prefer spring break at the beach. So let's isolate that. So a beach spring break is who we're looking at. How many of those people prefer to go to college away from the coast? So college away from the coast is here. So we would do 54 divided by just those people. So divided by 37 plus 54, the total of that, which is going to be 91. So then do 54 divided by 91 and you get 59% for that. Part B says what percentage of people who prefer to spring break skiing. Okay. So now we're in the skiing category. So let's isolate that. So now we're just looking at these people prefer to go away, um, to go to college away from the coast. So away from the coast is 36 over just those spring breakers that like skiing. And so then that's going to be 36 divided by 60. And that is going to give you 60%. Number six, a group of people who are surveyed about whether they prefer to bike or run to exercise 
and whether they prefer summer or winter weather. The results are in the table. What value could go in the blank cell so that the percent of people who like to bike and also prefer winter, so bike in winter, is 10%. So we want to figure out, this needs to be 10% of the total, right? So 10% as a decimal is 0 0.10 of our total needs to equal that cell, right? And so we're going to have to figure this out. Um, so our total in here is going to be if we add up 108 plus 212 plus 98 plus that blank, which we don't know, which is X. Okay, so 10% of that total needs to equal this same number in here, right? Needs to equal X. So let's um, do a little bit of algebra here. So we'll add together these numbers, 108 plus 212 plus 98 is 418. So we have 418 plus X should equal X. So now we'll distribute this 0.1 in, right? So we'll do 10% of each of these. And we get 41.8 plus 0.10x equals x. So then we'll want to get these like terms on the same side. So we'll subtract 0.1x from both sides. And we end up with 41.8 equals 0.90x. So then we want to get x by itself. So we're going to undo this multiplication by doing division. So we're going to divide by 0.9. So 41.8 divided by 0.9 is going to give us 46.44 is equal to x. So we would want to say, you know, 46 or 47 would go in here. So if you want to round down and say 46, then that would give you about 10% there. And you could always try this out. So you could add 108 plus 212 plus 98 plus 46. This would give us a total of 464. And when we do 46 divided by 464, we get 0 0.099, which rounds to about 10%.